Good morning. Sunday has come, thank God. And this Sunday we are observing as the 20th Sunday after Trinity. We'll follow the order of worship today that you'll find in your printed service folder. And for our worship today, our service will begin with an opening prayer. Let us pray. O Lord, our maker, redeemer, and comforter, we are assembled in your presence to hear your holy word. We pray you to open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through the preaching of your word, we may be taught to repent of our sins, to believe on Jesus in life and death, and to grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Christ's sake, amen. Hymn number 511, we'll sing verses one through four. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. 
Lift up your hearts. The Lord God, according to his promise, is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. By the command of Christ and the authority of my holy office, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun the good work in you bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. The Lord our God is righteous in all the works which he does, though we have not obeyed his voice. Give glory to your name, O Lord, and deal with your servant according to your mercy. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in his holy mountain. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace from above and for our salvation, for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Christ, have mercy. And for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Hymn 43, verses 1, 2, and 3. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us pray. Amen. 
Grant, we beseech thee, most merciful God, to thy faithful people, pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve thee with a quiet mind. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. Here, the Old Testament lesson appointed for the 20th Sunday after Trinity, written in the prophet Isaiah, the 65th chapter. We read there verses 1 and 2. It's written, I was ready to be sought by those who did not ask for me. I was ready to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, Here I am, here I am to a nation that was not called by my name. I spread out my hands all the day to a rebellious people who walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 115. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to your name give glory because of your mercy, because of your truth. Why should the Gentiles say, so where is their God? But our God is in heaven. He does whatever he pleases. You who fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord has been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless those who fear the Lord, both small and great. May the Lord give you increase more and more, you and your children. May you be blessed by the Lord who made heaven and earth. Hear the epistle lesson, Ephesians chapter 5, beginning with the 15th verse. It's written... Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel for this Sunday is written in the gospel according to St. Matthew in the 22nd chapter. We read there with the first verse in Jesus' name. Please rise in honor of the gospel of our Lord Jesus. And these verses will also serve as the basis for our sermon this morning. It's written, again, Jesus spoke to them in parables saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. He sent his servants to call those who were invited to the wedding feast, but they would not come. Again, he sent other servants saying, tell those who who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come to the wedding feast. But they paid no attention and went off one to his farm, another to his business. While the rest seized his servants, treated them shamefully and killed them. The king was angry and he sent his troops and destroyed those murderers and burned their city. And then he said to his servants, 
The wedding feast is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all whom they found, both bad and good. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to look at the guests, he saw there a man who had no wedding garment. And he said to him, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, bind him hand and foot and cast him into the outer darkness. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Hymn number 515. Let us pray. Merciful Father in heaven, we thank you that you give your holy word to us. 
as a warm invitation to join you at the feast of the wedding banquet of your son. We plead with you by your good Holy Spirit to open our hearts that we should with repentance and faith receive your holy word with joy and abide with you now and forever. To that end, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer, amen. In the name of Jesus, who has redeemed the world and whose love orders history to bring his word of grace to you. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. In our text for today, again, Jesus spoke to them in parables, and he began the words, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding feast for his son. In parables, our Lord He has hidden his meaning sometimes if people weren't ready to hear it. He has revealed things also in a way to make things memorable for us and to keep them with us in our minds and hearts. And he has taken us out of our heads and and brought the teaching about his kingdom into the real world and into real life where it belongs. You see, there are many of us for whom there's a temptation to take God's words and figure out how to make everything make logical sense. And that is the part of us that doesn't like things like mystery, doesn't like things like paradox or things that are held in tension would rather understand everything because then we can master everything. And when our Lord says in the text that we have in front of us for this morning, many are called but few are chosen, he invites us to consider the mystery of God's election of grace. But not like an orderly system of logic. Instead, you and I are brought into it as into a story where there are real things happening in time and space involving real persons and real relationships. And so we begin with the story as our Lord Jesus tells it. And the first person is the king. And the king that we meet in this gospel lesson is a father. And his fatherhood exists in a special way for his son, of course. Exists between him and his son. But now in this text, he extends his fatherhood to all his people. And he sets a table for them and he provides for them. But in the text it says those who were invited would not come. So understand by this that it's not that he didn't call them. And it's not that when he called them he didn't really mean it. He most certainly did. It's not that he didn't prepare enough food or set a table that was good enough to provide for them. But there is one reason and one reason alone for which they wouldn't come. They would not. And there are some things we have in common with such people. So what is the same? We are also living under the rule of this king and we also are invited to the wedding. And there is also something inside of us according to which we also don't want to come. There's something else I would rather do. Something more fun. Something more exciting. Something more about me. There's something 
else I'd rather do, some place I would rather be where I can decide for myself what is good for me, where I get to be the king and not in some stuffy and structured banquet with all the claims that it makes on me. And he said, he sent other servants. Tell those who are invited, see, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered and everything is ready. Come, come to the wedding feast. And now as we read this text, time is kind of stretching out for us. And we understand that our Lord is talking about really the way in which he has dealt with his people down through the ages. The feast is waiting. The food is ready. And the king, which is how strange, the king pleads with his subjects. Everything is ready. Come. And you can hear in that voice. Everything is ready. Come. You can hear the sound of the prophets, a whole chorus of them, including the voice of Moses himself and Isaiah and Jeremiah and that one that Isaiah spoke about when he said, there's a voice of one calling in the wilderness. But they paid no attention and went off, one to his farm and another to his business, while the rest, it says, he seized his servants, treated them shamefully, and killed them. After this point, the Lord Jesus does not mention the king's son. But the king's son is there, and he is all over this text. Because after all, the king's son is the one they despise when they despise the king's invitation. And the king's son counts himself with those rejected prophets of old. And in Luke chapter 13, his betrayal and his arrest and his cross are approaching and getting closer and closer. As the Lord Jesus said, nevertheless, I must go on my way today and tomorrow and the day following, for it cannot be that a prophet should perish away from Jerusalem. And at that voice, at that, at that point, the voice of our Lord Jesus cracks. And he says, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who sent to it. How often I would have gathered your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. He loved his people and he broke down and wept over that city. He would have gladly seen better things for it. But this feast, this feast is the thing that provides for us the remedy of the king's wrath against the murders in his realm. It was the one and only remedy and ransom that there was, and he would gladly forgive everyone, but they refused his son, and that refusal extended all the way out of the city to where the cross was. And the city then finally, when it fell and was in flames, it is a warning that everyone ought to believe it because no one needs to end up like this. And our word for this morning, the wedding feast is ready, but those invited weren't worthy. Go to the main roads and invite to the wedding feast as many as you can find. And those servants went out into the roads and gathered all they found, both good and bad, it says, and then the wedding hall was filled with guests. And so upstanding citizens are there. And also criminals are there. Young people are there and old alike. And families. And people who are healthy and people who are sick. All sorts. From every tribe, language, people, and nation. But then, 
who is this who is here without wedding clothes? And why do we see him in the gospel lesson he treated so harshly to be thrown out like he is? What is his offense? But you can see by this, you guys, what unbelief actually is, hidden in all the details in this story about the king and his son. The king's son is a prophet like Moses, given to us that we should hear him and believe him, trust him and follow him. Jesus is the burden-bearing ox. Jesus is the fat calf whose sacrifice is set before God and set before us to feed us. And he is the host and he is After all, the sweet-smelling soap and the clean, fair linen to dress you where he says you are clean and you are ready. You are ready for this, ready for the feast. An unbelief, which, truth be told, is what wants the upper hand in all of us. Unbelief is to strip off that garment that he gives and wear instead what? What we provide. Because it's good enough for me and it ought to be good enough for you, O king. You see, salvation is what God does. And it is what the man does that leaves him speechless. Now, if you use philosophy in the world of religion, if you use philosophy and human wisdom in the realm of faith, it will destroy your faith. And I know that it will, you guys, because in my lifetime, I have done it. How is it that God wants everyone to be saved and then not all are? But it says in the scriptures, they would not. How is it if God is almighty and all-knowing, how do things happen that run against his will? I don't know, man. I am not God. But what I do know is there is a whole world out there that is subject to corruption and death. And the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has committed himself completely to saving it. And I do know that his salvation is in the wedding feast of his son. And I do know that where the world has refused it, God is still at work so that somewhere out there, someone will believe and be gathered in so that the king's house be full. And I do know that right here and right now, you yourselves are being ushered in because that is what the Lord your God had planned for you. And that's just what it is. God frames all of this in relation to himself. And God says, come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Come to me, all you who are thirsty, and if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He says, trust me, and your faith has saved you, and your sins are all forgiven you. And then knowing that salvation is not in our hands but his, that our future is not because of what we've done but because of what he has done, then we begin to, we begin to pray like we did in the psalm today, which gives us the words for the theme for our sermon, not to us. Not to us, O Lord, but to your name, give glory. Give glory, O Lord, to your name in our salvation. 
and in the salvation, we pray, of many. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, forevermore. Amen. Please rise, and we'll join in the singing of the offertory verse, page six in your bulletin. Oh, Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that of your great mercy you have called us by your holy word to the blessed marriage feast of your Son. And that through him you forgive us all our sins. But being daily assaulted by temptations and offenses and dangers, we are weak in ourselves and given to sin. We beseech you graciously protect us by your Holy Spirit that we may not fall by the way of sin. And if we fall and defile our wedding garment with which your son has clothed, uh, clothed us so graciously, graciously help us again and lead us to repentance that we fall not forever. Preserve in us a constant faith in your grace through our Lord Jesus Christ in whose name we pray. Merciful Father in heaven, today we give thanks and praise to you for your kindness and mercy toward us and ask for your help and blessing upon this, your congregation, that you would bless us to come together and to work together for the glory of your name and for the gathering in of your kingdom. And as heavenly Father, we know that unless the Lord builds a house, the builders labor in vain, we plead with you for your help and for your blessing. Bless your word to us and in our midst. Fill our minds and hearts with your truth. Strengthen and sustain us and give us the joy of seeing precious souls gathered to your salvation together with us. Hear our prayer, Heavenly Father, as we give thanks with Tony and Karen Walken for their new uh, marriage and ask that you would be with them and bless and help them and build them up in the faith and keep them for eternal life and bless their new household together. We come before you and ask for your help and blessing uh, for Daryl and Rochelle Sephoric as they continue their battles with cancer. Pray that you would provide comfort, help, support, and healing, and grant your blessing upon them and their family. Merciful Father in heaven, these and all the prayers that you would have us bring to you, including prayers for that land that you love, we ask, merciful God, that you would bless the people in the Middle East and that you, would, that you would grant peace and a restoration to good order and that in your time and in your way, you would bless these things to serve for the gathering of precious souls there, that there may be Israeli Christians and Palestinian Christians united together with all your church in praise and thanksgiving to you for all your kindness and mercy. Lord, please grant help to those who are suffering. Please grant relief. Please grant uh, a restoration to those who are held hostage. Please bring home those who are, are, are being held against their will. Merciful Father in heaven, look down with compassion and with your favor and grant your help. Here also we pray, merciful God, 
as we bring you our private petitions. Merciful Father in heaven, we bring you the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for hymn number 222. Let us give thanks and pray. We thank you, Lord God the Father, that you have given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. We thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you have borne in your sacred body all our sins and by your blood have blotted out all our transgressions. We thank you, Lord the Holy Spirit, that you have created in our hearts true faith that we know of nothing to trust for our salvation except Jesus Christ 
and him crucified. Most merciful God, grant us your grace that we may perfectly believe that all our sins are forgiven for the sake of the passion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so enlighten us by your Holy Spirit that in the power of our Redeemer's death, we may day by day put off sin and never forsake the Lord Jesus Christ until we see him face to face in life eternal. We ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Please rise for the benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Please be seated for our final hymn today, hymn number 59. O Lord, we render unto you our heartfelt thanks that you've taught us what you would have us believe and do. Help us, O God, by your Holy Spirit for the sake of Jesus Christ to keep your word in pure hearts that we thereby may be strengthened in faith, perfected in holiness, and comforted in life and death. Amen.
Once again, everyone, good morning. I'm happy to see all of you. Thank you for the chance to be together here in God's house with you. And God bless you by all the things that you've heard and received from the dear Lord Jesus today. Just a couple of things to bring to your attention. Uh, first of all, I want to mention the back of the bulletin for today. Uh, and of course, on the very back page, you'll find the congregation praise. That's something that you can take and use for devotions. And on the page right before that, the announcements uh, for Redeemer this week. So I want to make sure to mention, first of all, everybody is invited to come down uh, to the end of the hallway for refreshments and for time together for fellowship and for, for uh, Sunday school and Bible study, which we started here in just a little bit. And then uh, also want to mention that uh, on Thursday, we have our virtual Bible class on Skype, uh, 7 o'clock. And uh, on Friday, a couple of things to mention. At 10 o'clock, uh, that is when the, uh, the committal service for Odin is taking place, right? 10.30. 10.30, okay. I think I wrote 10 o'clock in my day planner to make sure I was early. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But uh, so at 10, 10.30, uh, and that's uh, at the military funeral on, uh, on Pinnacle Peak, right? Yep, and so... Uh, 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 thank you, Mary, uh, uh, for making sure that we announce that and, uh, and making sure. Uh, so everybody, uh, uh, if you're able to come, would love to have the chance to see you there for uh, Odin's uh, service. Um, and, uh, and thank you, Mary Ellen, for that. On Friday is our trunk or treat here at Redeemer from 5 until 7. And, uh, and uh, then also come Sunday... Uh, next Sunday, uh, the divine service, God willing, with our Sunday school and adult Bible class at 1030. Um, and then we have our annual Reformation luncheon after Bible class. Uh, also, uh, there is a joint Reformation service at four o'clock at Tempe, in, at Emmanuel in Tempe, uh, if anybody is interested to attend that. Uh, that'll be next Sunday, um, you know, next Sunday in, in the afternoon. So, um, also would like to mention too that uh, pl uh, plans are underway and I'd like to say thanks to uh, anybody that's um, been able to try and, and help me with this. You guys know that I am taking classes and I am a student right now and as a part of being a student, I need to study and so one of the things that I thought I'd like to do is I'd like to put on a study hour here at the church. I'd like to do it for the college kids in town. Um, and uh, so uh, I'd like to ask you, if you would, please, please remember uh, just to say a little prayer and, uh, and ask that the Lord will make this a blessing. I'm going to try to do a little study hall that I want to invite the college kids to on November 5th. Um, and it's going to be a Sunday afternoon thing. And we're going to get together and, uh, and, uh, and we're going to make some coffee and we're going to give the kids, college kids, a place to study. And I'm going to be here to study, I think, uh, um, uh, there's a few others that have mentioned that they've had interest in doing this. And so I would love to have the chance to get together with, uh, you know, meet some, some of the college kids around and, and, uh, and, and, and as I'm studying, have the chance to give them a, a quiet place to study too. And also, you know, maybe some chance to uh, blow off some steam, you know, have some pizza, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, play, a, you know, a game of uh, something harmless. Uh, that it'd be fun that, you know, keep an eye on them and make sure they're behaving, but at the same time, give them something to do every once in a while, let off a little steam while they're studying. So I'm thinking like one o'clock until like 4.30 or five, something like that, to give them a nice window to study, if anybody would like to do that. And so, uh, and so far, the responses that I'm getting from people as I'm having the chance to talk to them has been pretty positive. People are like, I'd be excited to do that. But, uh, get, let me know when to come. So uh, we'll see, and, and God granted, I hope that that'll work out well. So November 5th is the date for that. Uh, no, November 5th is Sunday in the afternoon starting at one o'clock. So, um, and I'd like to thank uh, those that have mentioned that they'd be willing to help me put that on. Um, so we're looking forward to it. So uh, thanks everybody. Those are the things that we've got right now. I think that's everything unless there is anything else that may have been forgotten or needs to be announced yet. Um, is there anything yet that, that we ought to make sure to cover? Um, I do wanna say thank you to everybody whose efforts have gone into preparing for our trunk or treat event uh, this Friday. Thanks so much for being here. For, uh, there's been some work done outside on the lighting. Thank you for that. Uh, the work that's been done, uh, you know, to uh, get ready for the decorations and stuff like that and all those kinds of things. Today in Bible class, we're going to be talking about Egypt. And I think I've almost got Johnny talked into dressing like Pharaoh so I can dress like Moses and 
Anyway, uh, we'll see how that goes for the rest of the week. So thank you, everybody, again for the chance to be with you and to share God's word with you. The Lord be with and bless you all until we meet again. God grant it. I'll see you Sunday. So, um,